What's up guys, just want to give a quick preamble to this interview. None of these questions were pre-approved by Artcraft. This was not a marketing interview of any kind. This was an interview for the players, by a player. Got all these questions from Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, uh, my own personal questions. So I really appreciate Artcraft doing this and it was a uh, pretty raw interview. So I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this. If you're interested in Crowfall, be sure to sign up with the referral link down in the description, get 5% off, and you get in the beta for free when that starts up. So at least sign up at the very least. And uh, yeah, big shout out to Artcraft for doing this. Uh, we got some great new information. Hey. All right, so everyone, welcome to a very special edition of Ace Q&A Live, sort of. Yes. So, uh, introductions. I am J. Todd Coleman, creative director. I am Thomas Blair, the design director. And you are? I am Zyback. I, uh... Hey, Crowfall videos. <laughs> Play the game quite a lot. He does. Probably uh, more than we do, I would say. Probably way more. Yeah. And you make great video yeah. content, by the way. I really I enjoy watching that. your videos. Uh, so you guys want to just jump right into the Yeah, uh, sure. So, so the, the point today was just to uh, uh, let you shoot some questions at us, and we will talk about Crowfall. That's why we're here. So let's just jump so into I, it. So I've uh, accumulated these questions from various people. In the community, like guild people and um, just people on Reddit and stuff. Cool. Um, and I know you guys are working on the performance a lot, but can you give us any sort of hints at like? Because I know in the past you guys have said like, "Hey, we are fixing the trees, and this is yeah, no yeah, yeah, no." Thing. So I'm just curious if you guys had any because that's the big thing people are asking. Absolutely, about and it and it should be. So so there's a handful of so let me let me just start by saying. Performance is one of those words that means a lot of different things. Right. It's like saying I'm sick, right? Like, okay, well, I might be generally sick, but there could actually be seven different things that are going wrong with me that combine to make me sick, right? So performance is kind of like that. So we've got server performance, we've got client performance. Those are two different things, right? One is frame rate and the other is basically how many players can we hold at one time. We've got AI performance, which is how heavy are the monsters and all the spawners in the world. And then we've also got a, a memory state condition right now that's a problem. I'm kind of describing all the ways that we're sick. So we've got a problem where um, for some reason there, there, we hit a weird state where memory goes off the charts and effectively, once it chews through all the system RAM, the server gets into a really crappy state where it, it seems like to you guys it's just bad performance, but in actuality, the server's dying. And so what'll right. happen when it gets to that bad state is it'll eventually recognize that and say, crap, I'm in that bad state, I need to restart. So we're tackling kind of all of those different things, but when we fix just one of them, it doesn't mean that's gonna solve the problem because it's actually a handful of problems. Right. So let's kind of take each one in turn. So we've got some people looking in to try to figure out how we get into the bad memory state. We think that it's some particular combination of powers. We're not sure which ones, but we thought for a while it might be Ranger or it might be charged powers. We thought it might be Hots and Dots. It is surprisingly hard to figure out because in a given server, you've got hundreds of people scattered across the world who are all triggering different powers at different times. So if you take a snapshot and say, hey, we're in the bad state now, what is everybody doing? You still don't know which right. of those clumps of players cause the problem. Does that make sense? So that, that's, that's one, yeah. which is the bad state. Number two is just general overall client and server performance based on powers that we needed to optimize. And so we're working on that too. So you found one last week, for example, right? That was a confessor power. The infinite dot. Yeah, yeah you a, know. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Familiar with that one. Yeah, it was, it was basically <laughs> a, a power that was triggering its own hanging effect. So, and it didn't even have a one second cooldown or something. No, it had so. a half. It had a half second. So at least okay. that that saved the server yeah. as, as well as the client. But uh, we have little things like that scattered. Yeah, so we've got how many powers do we have now? We're um, over a thousand. Uh, probably another added another hundred in the last couple of weeks with okay. new AI stuff. And all right, so so we're having to go through a process of basically power by power running performance checks and getting them kind of in groups. So it's not actually by general like class, it's by type. So, all right, now we need to do with all the hots and dots. And we, we're basically doing a conversion program. That's, that's one of the things we have going on internally is a timelines. 
change where we're moving all of those things in mass. And I think we're at about 800 of them transferred over now. And that's why you're seeing the big gains that we have seen, except when you get in the bad state. So I'm sorry, there's a bunch of these because like I said, it's not one problem, it's actually a handful. So we've got client optimizations that we need to do. Some things like the group shader seems like that's wonky. So we got people looking at that. We've got character controller issues, which are people running around in the world and we're trying to optimize that. That hasn't come on yet and won't come on until the next version, 5.9. We've actually got it in testing now, but we didn't want to just drop it on everybody because like I said, there's a hell of a lot of powers and I don't want to make the experience get worse. I want to actually test it till it's good enough to get better. We've got the server memory issues that we're actually dealing on with bot testing. So we have now uh, basically bots that can log in in the dozens and hundreds and we're trying to get them to act enough like players that they'll trigger the state issue so we can figure out where that problem is. Um, and then we've got overall client just performance optimization, which still needs to be done. So it's it's not one thing. That's the problem. Is it as an outside looking in? It's it, it's easy. It's like to go, just fix the performance. Fix your performance. Yeah, I, I, I guess I was just asking if there was like I know in previous builds there was like a eureka moment where it was like the grass, the trees. Yeah. Like, I didn't know if you guys have found any sort of like big thing right away. We. We, we do find uh, so some of those, right but now. there's also just large scale systemic things that we have to get yeah. to. So I don't have a great answer. I realize that that was a lot of words uh, mm. and it sounds like I'm just kind of rambling. The reason that I'm rambling is because it's just not easy, right? It's not like there's yeah. a single switch that we can say, turn off shadows and wazam, all of a sudden server and client performance right. is there. The most important thing is to recognize, number one, that we know there's a problem and we're working on it. And number two, that we are making positive, significant changes in the right direction. I mean, the previous 5.7 build, while, I mean, is, was way worse than where we are now with 5.8, right? We are starting to get some really cool fights. When things are working, they're working. It's just that at some point it kind of spins out of control. We know we're still not there yet. That's that's one of the major things that's keeping us in pre-alpha, in my opinion, is, is we need to get on the other side of the performance and, problem. And an inordinate amount of the team is spent working on, on all those, of these. On all of those issues. Right, so, so unfortunately that, that means that we can't focus those engineers purely on gameplay because we have a lot of them just working on optimization and making it playable. Yeah. But from an outside, it, it's just looking in, it's like, well, the car engine doesn't turn over. Make it turn over. Well, yeah, I, I there's about mm. half a dozen reasons that it's not turning over. and We have to tackle each one of them or the whole thing doesn't quite work. And that's just unfortunately where we are. I, I, I'll be honest, I wish we were further along in this regard, but at the same time, it is what it is. Um, what we're doing is really weird and different. So it's not easy to point to other MMOs and say, well, they got it to work. Well, that, that's true, but they don't do large scale procedural worlds with stitching terrain. And, uh, you know, it, it's just different. So, But thankfully, we got a, a lot of optimization in the stitching stuff in 5.8. We did. We did. 5.8 is a huge improvement forward. It's just not quite there yet. So I, I don't know. Is that, does that give you the answer yeah. that you were looking yeah, for? I think that's, that's probably succinct, succinct enough. Um, <laughs> as succinct as I can next make it. Question. Yeah. Yeah, next question. Um, so you guys talked about um like comeback mechanics and the victory points system yep and that's uh, coming right now that actually work just got done it's going to uh go into internal testing today actually the capture bonus pool bonus point pool yeah. so, so sorry my, i interrupted my, your question but yeah so my question is so there's a way to come back but inevitably there's going to be situations where the opposing force is just dominant yep and i'm curious how you're going to incentivize players to join the losing side because there needs to be somebody for the winners to fight because you know like right now for example there's a, a situation on europe where everybody is chaos yeah how do you incentivize people to not pick chaos particularly if you're offering campaign rewards only to the winners yeah it's a, that's a tough one right i mean at the end of the day um much much bigger more popular time-tested games still have this problem right occasionally you see a football game that's just totally out one team totally outclasses the other and racks up so many points it's apparent from the very beginning so there's only so far we can go to actually solve that problem we can do things like limiting the number of people who can join in different factions and things like that and i'm happy to do that eventually if we have to what i wanted to do right now was just try and get it in to where we at least have a scoring mechanic that 
will try and give us better campaigns. We've only had of the you know eight or ten campaigns so far. We've only had one that was really a nail biter at the end. <sighs> it was an EU campaign. So mm. I want to see if we can get more um, if we can get more games to end in that result. And then after that, I'll start looking at more draconian things because I don't yeah. like the idea of limiting. Who, how many people can join Chaos? Like, if all my buddies get in and then I log in and I can't get into Chaos, that kind of sucks too, right? So at some point, you hit you hit a threshold where it's like, all right, well, the remaining problems, there just aren't really great solutions for. So we'll try things out and pick the one that we think is the best, and you guys will tell us what you think of it, and we'll just try and work through it. But I, I know I, I don't have a perfect answer on that one, right? We'll do the best that we can to, to deal with the situation. Um, and then after that, I don't always see. We could always come up with like, you know, come like uh, cavalry bonuses. Like, hey, we noticed that order is not winning here. Let's try and do something to give a reward to juice people who are willing to come in and join that team. I'm open to it. Players always follow the rules. Sorry, I keep like, looking down at you. I should be looking <laughs> up at the camera. Up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm doing it. I'm doing the same thing. But um, yeah. my uh, that's that was like one of my ideas was to offer different re rewards for the like second place team that way like yeah. if there is a dominant force on chaos sure they can get those rewards for winning but they might naturally break off of chaos if they wanted to get other rewards for being part of the team that you know because that's i guess that's my big concern is that mmo players always take the path of least resistance sure. even if it may, means making the game like you guys know about mmos where yeah. if there's something that's 25 percent more efficient and five times less fun, people will do the 25%. Right, okay. and then they'll get yeah, mad at so, the game, and then they'll quit. I think yeah. their numbers so are way too all big. They'll join the same faction and have a terrible experience. Yeah. And uh, I think yeah. a 5% so difference, difference is enough to get people to shift over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I will say in the Dregs campaigns, that shouldn't be as big of a problem because... I can't just say, hey, I want to join Winterblades, and they're going to be like, yeah, sure. I mean, that they get they get to choose, right? Every time you swear, it's going to be a negotiated thing. So I think that'll help quite a bit. Um, it, unless you have a Napoleon who's like, I'll take everybody, and I'm winning enough that everybody joins. We might see that some, but I don't think it'll be the rule. I think it would be the exception. We actually talked right. about that yesterday. I've been working on the dregs design stuff actually for the last week or so, trying to take it to another level of detail. Um, and uh, just just because you know we're to that point where I need to, to get that stuff locked in, and that was one of the scenarios we actually talked yep. through yesterday. So is what happens if we get somebody who is just winning enough and willing to take everybody in, and we'll see if it's a problem that I'll deal with it. So. All right. Uh, a lot of people ha are concerned with the changes to advanced weapons being nerfed and the game being too heal heavy. Um, basically, they're, they're, they're calling it the, yeah. uh, the great apple wars where the fights don't end until somebody runs out of food. Uh, and they want to know, why not make healing scale off of weapon damage? Uh, well, there's a whole lot embedded in there. Uh, the advanced weapons were 3x a, a step up. We usually call them stair steps for each tier of thing. And the advanced weapons were just a 3 or 4x above the intermediate weapons, which meant that you were just that much better than a player. Right. Who, well, it, what it meant was there was a minimum bar to be, really be competitive, right? right? And if right. you didn't have advanced, then you yeah. weren't competitive. They didn't so, need all of the damage that was on there. So I went ahead and, and made it a single stair step. The runic weapons will be a single stair step up from that. Um now, that's going to have a bunch of side effects, as you rightly pointed out, which means that healing is going to feel a little more powerful because players aren't going to be able to do as much damage across the board because yeah. everybody's damage is going to come down a little bit. Okay. Um, there was also, we haven't talked about this a lot, but there was a stat mod bug in there that uh, Charlie and I tracked down, which was causing certain classes what to... What is a stat mod, Blair, for <laughs> someone who doesn't understand and follow us on a daily so, basis? So... We have a whole bunch of fun fun things that we can do with our player statistics. Okay. Like um, damage from behind is a stat. Right. And I can take a regular power and I can say, hey, this power gets benefits from the damage from behind stat. Pretty simple enough. So we do it in a lot of ways. So in a lot of powers, they have melee damage baked into it. They have damage from behind baked into it. They have specific, like the knights will have mighty shield baked into their shield powers. So when they increase their talent, all the... The damage just increases. Right. So yep. it's great for us because it means that Halish and I don't have to go into a bunch of power templates 
and change them once you change we change every power individually we you just can change... adjust a knob and it has ripple right effect. so basically yeah. we're setting up our giant wall of knobs so that we don't have to basically we can reduce a thousand knobs down into one knob which is great um, however we had a bug in there where some things were just scaling too good off of those stats on the weapon damage percent and they shouldn't have been this is where we see the pit fighter all of a sudden receiving a huge damage boost recently that we didn't account for right same with uh assassin has the, has a similar problem because they get a lot of these uh they get the melee one they get and the backstab one or from behind and those were scaling too good so they're gonna probably see a hit based off of that yeah i i, I know <laughs> Did, like this. I know, I know you didn't. Did, did you feel ineffective before? I'm not sure that you can make the argument that you're that you were ineffective. Right. Uh, so you're probably going to have to work a little harder on it. Maybe, maybe uh -huh. what's going to happen is because damage is coming down, those CC uh, uh, crowd control variants of all of the the specs will start to feel better because you will have to put somebody into a stun lock to to knock them down rather than just doing burst damage. Um, there's still the argument that maybe retaliates too cheap, um, but we'll get to that. The problem is, is all being overshadowed now by too much damage. So um, across the board, that means that healing is also going to get better because now all of a sudden people aren't dying in eight or nine seconds. Right, and I think that's the concern is that it might get too much better. Right. And if so, all right, then. So, so the worrying about the ripple effects is not a reason to not change things that need to be fixed right. i guess that's the thing is okay. yeah i mean ultimately i i wanted a shallow shallow power curve that's what we originally talked about we didn't end up there once everything came out it ended up not shallow enough we felt like that was something we needed to address so we went back to fix it i have no doubt now there'll be another round of balance changes that roll out of that and that it just this is never ending this, this i know doesn't stop. i know it is yeah. this is what you call live service i mean you've played wow for many oh, yeah. years i mean and every two years they have a free get out of jail card where they can just hit the nuclear button and reset everything which they do at, at expansion breaks um we're not to that point yet we're still at the initial stages and we are going to make as many balance changes as we need all the way forward it, it's especially challenging when you don't have major systems online that you need right like right. like the um the whole question about you know uh advanced gear is too is too powerful and that also means that harvesting is too important because i can't i have to go and get the best stuff to be able to make it and we don't have any kind of refineries we don't have any factories so that means harvesting is way too much that's true however if we are, are we balancing for the game that we're trying to make? Or are we balancing for the game that people are playing right now? And that's been an ongoing struggle for us the whole time. Because if we decide to go in and make a giant change to, you know, the, the flow of materials, and then factories come online, it means we have to go back and undo that short-term change. This has been a dance we've been trying to do the whole time. It's awesome that you guys are in a playing. I mean, it's invaluable for us, but it also is especially challenging when you have massive pieces that are missing, right? Mounts was the same way. That's why you right. Blair went ahead and put in a fake mount item that gave you the benefit of the mount without actually us having all the work done for mounts. And the reason was we're making decisions based on like world size and stuff like that and travel speed, assuming in our minds, yeah, but eventually they'll have mounts. And that's very different, the assumption of how mounts might affect the game versus how they actually affect the game. So it, it, it's this has been a very, very bizarre process, the idea of developing... I, I, the example I use all the time is like we took orders for food and then we let people sit in the restaurant and we're building the kitchen. We're not just <laughs> cooking their food. We're actually building the kitchen. Then we're going to cook their food. It's, it's, it's been challenging but also really cool because we get instantaneous feedback on what we're building. That's really nice because it means we can't fool ourselves into thinking something is great when it's not, which in a normal development process you can. Uh, and that's that's an unfortunate part of normal development. Right. You can get to the end and then find out you screwed something up. You guys are very, very clear on letting us know from the beginning, no, no, you made this mistake or that mistake. It, um, but it is challenging at the it, same it's time. It's super challenging, especially uh, when you get horsewhipped basically like People say there's too many clicks in crafting. There's too many clicks. There's too many clicks. And, it's like, and there are. <laughs> if I had if I had factories online, there's not too many clicks. It's yeah. just like I'm missing this huge element that's the basically one of the foundations of the design, and we just haven't had time to put it in. And, and sometimes it's both are true, right? It's like yeah, factories will come online. <laughs> And there still will be too many clicks, and in which case we want to make that change. But I don't necessarily want to make the change 
too early and then find out that no, it was just because the system was missing and actually now we have to go change it again. It's just, it's a constant dance. So there you go. Another so, so, long-winded so answer. Based, yeah, so based off of the initial part of that answer, it seems like you guys are making an effort to sort of slow the combat down in terms of people's health bars just dropping it, like, well, that's sort of what it's. That's sort of what it seems like. You guys are trying to sort of. We had make numbers the that we thought that were going to go out, and because of bugs and because we didn't land on the right spot on weapons, those numbers were off. Yeah. So they, I, I actually, our expectations right. were they were much lower, and players right. get out there and they're just they're, they're off the scale. People, yeah. So yeah. you you got okay. you and and you and you and all of you may actually have feelings on time to kill that we do need to adjust it, and I'm sure you probably do, and I'm, I'm happy to discuss those, but this particular change was really about making the power curve more shallow, in my mind, than it was adjusting time okay. to kill. So, well, people people are wondering why not, I guess, the real question here, because people were asking, like, why not just buff the basics and the intermediates up to where they, like, closer to the advanced rather than nerfing the advanced down, and basically that just boils down to a question of time to kill. That's basically a time to kill question. Oh, were you, so you going guys for were, time to kill? You guys I was, were, in, I was you guys going were intending to... the time to kill to be a little bit lower, or a little bit slower than what it is now. Yes, I would well, it will be what we thought it was going to be, rather than a series okay. of, of bugs, and or yeah. we just right, landed wrong on the crafting of the weapons. We just landed too high. Right. Right? Yeah. So once we put, once the spreadsheets are in line with what is reality, then we can have discussions about okay. tweaking the knob. Yeah. When the knob yeah. it has an offset to it, that's when it's really hard to, to adjust things because we'll go, oh, you know what? We made this change and melee damage is now too low by 10%. Well, I can just go to the melee stat and adjust it, Yeah. right? I don't have to go in it and now do some, I like to call Kentucky windage and adjust for it being off by 30%. What is Kentucky windage? <laughs> what is that? It's when you... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. You're trying to figure out the windage on your on your rifle, right? And you need to do what the wind is because oh, you have right, to right, offset right. for it. I, and you're I, basically I, taking a guess. You know, I've grown up in Texas my whole life. I, I've, I've, I was raised. I've never heard that phrase. I guess it's because it's a Kentucky phrase. Maybe. No, it's. I'm not from Kentucky. I'm from San Diego. I it's a uh, sure military it's a military phrase. phrase. There you go. <laughs> right. That so I mean, because on a rifle range, you have flags blowing, and okay. you can figure out. Oh, the wind is at six. So I crank my rifle or my. Uh, my rear aperture six to that adjust is, for it. That is a fascinating. Anecdote. When I don't have that, I have to figure out what the wind is. Okay. So you be like, oh, it, it's a strong Fair breeze. Point. Everybody, you learn something every day. So, <laughs> all right. Next question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, we know that there's physics changes coming with the with the new physics client controller thing. Yep. Um, will this result in a net reduction in physics? Because right now. It's crazy. Yeah, so definitely. I, I don't. I really am not happy with where our our trajectory, like like player trajectory, like knock ups, knock down, things like that. Um, it's the, more the, the knock ups that are problem. Yeah, I, I I'm not happy with that stuff at all. It looks ridiculous as well, which is it just looks unpolished. So yeah, we need to get to that. That's on the list of things that definitely needs. I, to be I think a lot of these things are. They're branches that we started growing early on, like all because we started in a pure physics environment. Yeah. Right. So it's very easy to make these changes like, oh, hey, it just knocks them up. Yeah. Velocity by 14 upwards. Um, and we just really haven't had time to polish that stuff because we've been shifting controllers. Uh, we've been. Yeah, we've been we've been kind of falling back on that. Right. Really, since the beginning of the project. I mean, we um, had, in the beginning, we had the pure rooted. Everything was root motion. Everything was pure physics. We had the iframes in there, and we just kindly – we've been shifting the, comp, yeah. like, the well, model, and well, we still have some of these appendages that we need to kind of either lop this off. This was an example of you guys as a whole. I mean, individuals in the community liked it, but for the most part, the community on that one was loud and clear that they didn't like it. And so this is a great example of something that I'm glad we had the community in and playing from the beginning because that would really suck to find out that they hate your whole combat right. model when you finally go into beta, right? So that, this, this is one of the benefits of, of that is the downside, of course, is it means more time, more iterations. Well, it and just going means back and trying again means more time. pieces that are still hanging around from that, though, is the example. Yeah, that's true. Right, and that's why we've had invulnerabilities attached to everything for so long. And Mark and I just didn't think they fit anymore. We never really liked them, but they were part of the original combat model. Right. Right, because the root motion combat relied on that because you were locked in an animation and you needed to be able to go invulnerable. Yeah. That's no longer true. Plus, it creates weird balance scenarios 
where you can just shut off all incoming damage for X amount of time. Right. Right. An which army is, of people can't take you which down. Which is the, yeah. a secondary problem with the pit fighter is if there's 50 people beating on him and he's invulnerable, 50 people can't down him. Right. Right. With the barrier model that we went to on DC, as well as now that we're bringing into this project, um, if there's 50 people there, they'll chew through that barrier quickly. Yeah. However, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, the barrier will last pretty much the same time as an invulnerability or two-on-one. Two okay. Right. So the net outcome should be the same unless there's overwhelming forces. So there you have it. Yep. I will say one thing about the new controller that's coming online is uh, the monsters, I noticed, looked so much smoother when I got in and saw it. They actually moved around. And it, it was very apparent to me that the old ones were pretty janky compared to the way the new ones looked. Uh, right up until the moment where the spider crawled on top of the vendor's head. And in the newbie experience, and I was like, all right, this is still not ready to go out yet. But, but up until that moment, it looked way, way better. Well, yesterday we had the practice dummies are walking around in our test environment <laughs> in there. And Valerie was like, hey, why are the practice dummies moving around? I'm like, what? And this one was just walking through the forest. I'm like, he's supposed to be immobile. What the like hell? Blair Witch Project <laughs> right there. So. He's just walking through the woods. All right, so we're, we're spending too much time right. giving you more answer than you probably want on these. So let's, let's rip through some questions relatively quickly. What else you got? Uh, so I think I, I'll, I'll, anybody who's been playing the game for a while probably knows the answer to this, but the maybe people that don't might not. Um, friendly fire. What are your what are your guys' plans for that, if any? So I, and, I uh, I'll, so I'll give you my answer because it's been the same yeah. for like three years now, which is we I'm okay to give a shot and try and 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 try a friendly fire variant where we just like all right, you can take damage. But I don't think it's going to be cool, and I'm not going to then go and change the entirety of the game. So I'm my my thing that I said is I will try it, but that doesn't mean I'm guaranteeing that it will be good. In fact, I think it won't be good. I think nobody's going to like it, and then I know it's going to happen. You guys are going to start bitching. Well, you told us it was going to be great, and I didn't, and I'm not. And so it makes me actually not even want to try it because I'm so convinced it's not going to be good. But we'll give it a shot. I, I'm okay to try it, and maybe people will like it. Um, it's just that the game wasn't built that way from the ground up. And if I have to choose between the two, that's super risky to the entire project, whereas the other one is not. So I'm going to go with the one that's not because we have enough risk already. I mean, that, we're trying crazy shit that other games have never done before, right? Or at least not since Shadowbane. So, yeah. Yeah, I, the, only, right. the only one that people were sort of interested in trying, that from my from what I could tell, was the group wide friendly fire. So okay. people in your group were immune to your stuff. Okay. But and and that the idea behind that was that it would naturally spread out the battle. Yeah. Where everybody wouldn't just clump up. That's Look, the only I, one I would that love, I might work. Maybe. I would love to be wrong on this one. Like I would actually love to turn it on, put it up as a campaign variant, and find out that there is a hardcore niche within our niche audience that is like we really love this please keep these kind of campaigns going uh, that's awesome i would love that i just my my fear is that it won't be great and it's going to lead to a hundred more requests of well it will be great if you just change this that and the other and i don't have time to do all those things yeah i don't so, want it to poison the, the combat well right that's the problem and so, the, the other the the one where we are pl toying with the idea of it is the siege weapons so we have we have had some internal. Oh, like, I, didn't, I didn't actually know that. That's yeah, kind of interesting. We're like, it's kind of silly that I'm turning a catapult to fire on you because you're an enemy. Yeah. And you're surrounded by five dudes, and it's just like I just well, hit him with the big We still couldn't candle. do that in the faction campaigns though, because it's an act. It it means that the best way for me to grief my own team or grief another team is to join with an alt account, log in, and just grief the hell out of my own party or my own faction members, knowing they can't do anything about it. Which would mean that's now the best way to play our game. So that's the challenge right faction yeah. versus dregs that's that's a significant difference um so we did even then we'd have to make it a dregs only thing right stop messing with the fun thing sorry i <laughs> just uh, i always so, my uh, immediate thought on any design discussion is is okay so if i was going to just troll in grief how would i use it to do that um and then i've got a couple buddies who are ultimate troll and griefers and i call them and i ask them that question too so i call it defensive design so it's hard. I, I'm. It's like I'm having to think through the worst case scenario against a hive mind of people who are all better at these games than me, and I have to be smarter than all of them, and that just doesn't work, right? So, defensive design. And wait till there's more of them finding even more. Right. Absolutely. So. 
There you go. There's, um, there's your answer. Friendly, friendly fire. All right, so this is more of a, uh, a, a class design philosophy question. So right now, the Confessor, its most powerful weapon is fall damage. And nice. I think that's a little bit problematic I because it, dispro too. it disproportionately punishes tanks. Yeah. Uh, because it's all of that damage is based off of percentage of max HP, particularly it's, the Myrmidon. It's because, unavoidable. You know, it's so, unavoidable. Yeah. It's true type damage, so you can't mitigate against it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. I, I think our fall damage is a little ridiculous anyway, to be honest. I, I think it's a little over the top. So, yeah, so Probably when people are being thrown everywhere. And it, especially that. It right? exasperates it, yeah. right? I mean, Normally, it, it's yeah. actually worse to be hanging out on the walls of your fort trying to plink and defend because somebody is. will come and knock you off and that'll kill you. Like, that's clearly not the yeah. intention. So, so right now, with the way confessors are, it's pretty much impossible. If somebody's up on a hill, it is impossible to push up on them because all they have to do is have a confessor just shoot you up just a little bit, and it can one-shot you. Yeah. And in the case of a lot of tanks, right, the Myrmidon tank in particular, when you have the fall damage based off of a percentage of maximum health. So if I'm at 10,000 health, which is 100% HP, and then I pop my Myrmidon stuff, get up to 20,000 HP, that puts me at 50% of my maximum HP, and now I get one shot by the fall damage that I wouldn't have been one shot by if I didn't increase my max HP. Yeah, that yeah. sounds really stupid. Yeah, they uh, <laughs> they wanted a buff to confessors, <laughs> so that's it. Everybody was like, "Fix confessors, fix confessors." And that that was your that was no, your, it was your unintentional, tactic? but yeah, it was it was... unintentional. So actually, I, I I really like the confessor uh, the confessor talent trees. I think sanctifier and five eight one is going to be far more interesting, or no one's going to play yeah. it because right now they're abusing it because. They don't have to equip the passive for all of the defensive benefits. Okay. So they're basically a super tanky mage. However, the intent there was they're super tanky, but they're basically a melee uh, caster. Okay. So they lose all of their range, and it's totally just burning people in the face. Yeah. But they don't have to do that right now. If they don't load out the passive in 581... They get both. Basically, best of both worlds. They get best of both worlds. Okay. In 581, it's automatically going to give it to them, but it's not going to consume a passive slot. Yep. So... Like I said, either it'll be one of the great specs or no one will play it because yeah. it it loses that kind of OP right, so nature. Fall, falling damage to the original question is on my list of things that we need to look at. Let's get on the other side of character controller because it's tied intimately into that, and then we'll take a look at it. Um, I, I do think it needs to be adjusted. Pushing people off of fort walls to their death was not the intended It wouldn't gameplay. surprise me if it's problems with the current controller that's saying they're falling too far. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't surprise me at all. Is it thinks they're very, falling from the Because it's very random. So it makes me think that, that the client controller... Well, if you recall, in, in 5.7, you could just be walking along oh, a rock. mostly flat plane, and you could trip over a walk and a rock and take like 15,000 health and stuff. So I, I suspect there's still some wonkiness going on there as well. And I'm hoping that when new controller comes online... I'm sure it will cause a bunch of our older problems to go away completely and bring a few new ones. But once we get through those new ones, it should be a much more solid foundation. This is actually that the client controller in, in particular was something that we started effort on six months ago, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, and it's been cooking in the background this entire time because it was just this was an area of the code that we're like, you know what, this this probably needs a, a little cleaning pass before we go and. <laughs> And, and it actually well. needed to be burnt to the ground. Uh, it wasn't uh, well. It wasn't that bad, but it was definitely an area that that caused some issues. So, all right. Uh, so right now, uh, a lot of the CC in the game that's not physics based is fairly useless because uh, retaliate is very very good and it gives you immunity to CC after you pop it. You can pop two in a row, then you've got the iframes from your ultimate uh, and other you know juggernaut things like that. So pretty much anything that's not a root pull or knock up is kind of bad. Um, this is kind of a two-pronged issue. Also, there's kind of a problem with it. Uh, you don't really know how long your CCs are going to hit for. Is there any way we can get some sort of like resolve bar where it's like, hey, I know this kidney shot is going to be half duration instead of full duration? Because right now there's really no way of knowing how long idea. your CC is going to last. Yeah, I think uh, Tor has one of those for their, their CC. They've got a little meter around the character so yeah. you can see how much... Yeah, uh, that's cool. Um, that's not out of the realm of, of possibility. Um, the CC, but from a philosophy standpoint, Mark and I aren't too keen on people being out of control of their character for too long. Right? The, the, it's just... Being stunt locked to death always is not 
a lot of fun. It's not fun, yeah. Right. So um, that's why the retaliates, we kind of want to – We it used to be, God, what was the old retaliate system was you had one and then it was on a super long cooldown. I mean, we've gone through many iterations to get to where we are where you feel more in control, and if you've saved your stamina, then you can use it back-to-back -back twice. Um, so – I don't know that there's an answer I, there. It's just it's more of a philosophy thing. Well, we I, don't like players out of control of their characters. Yeah, but give, giving more information, I think, is a good idea. I actually I like that. Oh I yeah, yeah. A meter. On, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think right now it's just that I, I think right now it's I think the problem is when you pop the retaliate, you're immune to CC immediately after. So even if somebody burns through your retaliates, you yeah. have regen that stamina by the time you're hit, able to be. It's just very hard to lock people down. Yeah, in, and we had a lot of that capacity. because uh, roots. We have a lot, like Hand of the Gods, that is it Hand of the Gods that pulses? It's a pulsing root. Um, and it would be, like, I just burned my retaliate. Guess what? You instantly got rooted again. Yeah. Oh, I burned another one. Oh, you're in, like, yeah. it, it would put you in one of those kind of, uh, you're in a flat spin and you need goose to pump you out, but there's no goose, right? Your F-14 just crashes. Top Gun reference? That was a Top Gun God, reference. you are on fire today. <laughs> Gibson loves it. All right. Uh, next question. Inventory space. Oh, uh, yes. R right now, the game, uh, many guilds are being held together by the duct tape of mule accounts. And uh, yeah. the, the bank space is just... Is, just yeah, terrible. so okay, like so the, let me talk about the bank space real quick. So that was a technical limitation of the way the system was set up that we are fixing. I just, it's not made its way through the pipe yet. So that will be fixed. Those bank spaces are tiny. We know it. We're going to fix that. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's a, we, it, it's actually being done as part of the overall work towards the embargo system. And it, it, it requires us to go through and do a little bit of restructuring on the yeah. persistent side. Um, so that that's all coming. Uh, we know that it's an issue. It was never intended to be that way. It was just a technical limitation. And I I remember I came in to the engineers. I was like, what well, what happened to the bank space? And they're like, oh yeah, well we don't want to risk character records getting so large that they could potentially overflow the networking buffer. So I had to limit that artificially right now until we get back to doing the XYZ technical work. And I was, okay, I don't love it, but I understand it's a short-term thing. So you guys should also understand it's a short-term thing. We'll, we'll get that fixed. And as far as the guild question, because you're you're hinting there about guild mules, which is, well, what do guilds do? Because guilds just want to pool all their stuff. Yeah. And then, hey, all the harvesters throw all the resources in here. The crafters come and take it and convert it into stuff, and then that stuff is put back yeah, up Yeah, we there. also don't do that right now. We don't do, like, container shared containers and chests right. and stuff like that. That's all connected to the same technical issue, is is we didn't have a good centralized place where we're storing all that stuff, so it was being stored on the characters themselves, right. which was causing the character records to bloat really, really large, and we just haven't gotten to it. But we, we've got some work there. But we know it's, it's a pain point. I, I absolutely know it's well, a pain point. Well, the work's point. already being done. It's just not done yet, so. Yeah, it's just... There's it, it, like it needs to be expanded like quite a lot just because yeah. there's so many different unique items. For example, there's like six different types of blood and bones, like the different qualities. Because you've got it's just like and I'm not even a crafter, and I'm somebody that really struggles with it. So it's yeah. there's a lot of, a lot of different unique items. Like for example, like if I gank a guy that's digging graves, like it's not even fun because now I just have this inventory nightmare to deal with. Of body parts? Unique items. I'm sorry that it's not fun because you just don't <laughs> have and you just cannot carry all the loot that you just found. <laughs> I will fix that problem for you. So, no, we, we know it's there. It's just, it's, it's one of those things that's actually not a design decision. It's driven by an underlying technical um, thing that we haven't finished yet, but we'll get it done. All right. Um... <laughs> Uh, so a lot of people are sort of frustrated right now with the current spirit bank mechanics. How far away are we from getting away from the you can spirit bank anything you want anywhere? That's, a, that's also part of this. So so yeah. the containers, the embargo system, and the spirit bank stuff is all part of one piece of work. So it, it is actively being worked on right now. So I don't want to promise a particular date yet, but it is coming to a milestone very soon. How's that? Top men are working on it. Top Men. Top men. Look at that. I got an Indiana Jones reference. There you too. go. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, people are wanting to know how track will work. You've hinted at a tracking. 
I have, and, and I, I, that's one that I actually, it's not that I can't answer it, it's I don't really want to yet because I have an idea for that system, but I really need to go and sit down and dig through it and get it costed out to make sure that we can get it in by launch. It's one of those things where I don't want to promise it, get people excited about it, and then have to come and say, oh, actually, it's a post-launch thing. So <laughs> let, let me, let me, let me uh, use my amulet that I promised I would use. I'm gonna use it anyway, uh, just because that's. It's not that I can't. I just don't want to talk about it yet. Yeah. So. All right. Um, I, this is another one you probably might have to invoke the amulet on. People right. are wanting some Frostweaver hints. Oh, yeah. You, oh. you can get some of that. I'm okay with that, actually. Yeah, we we've started work on their alternate forms this week. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the Frostweaver is going to be one of our uh, finest moments or greatest crap. No, that's got to be plan A. It's plan B be doesn't our, sound very good. Our it's finest be moments. It, we uh, have a lot of fun stuff that we have planned for the Frostweaver. Probably because at this moment in time, we've built 10 classes, 100 disciplines, like 600 talents. Yeah. Like, we know kind of where we are in, in our tech pipeline, yeah. right? We, we, and we're really trying to push it to some fun new things for the Frostweaver because, you know, we could have busted out the uh, an ICE version of the Confessor really quickly. Right. Right. And, and we didn't want to do that because Halish and I always want new mechanics to give you guys new fun stuff. I mean, so I think the Frostweaver is going to be a lot of fun. Um, we've got a couple big tech pieces in there, so that's... That's and there's it. a bigger art load, right? And for the, this particular... the art load on this one is significant compared to the other ones. Right. I don't think we've ever had this much art for a class, uh, period. So there you go. It's gonna be flashy, huh? Yeah, probably. Definitely. <laughs> okay, definitely. I even asked Melissa for three more today. Okay. And she's like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, we can do that. Wow. Yeah, look at that. She's very agreeable, I guess. <laughs> when you ask for stuff. <laughs> Because I do it so rarely, and I have good reason. Uh, all right, so uh, with the changes to the account training, or with the passive training, with you guys taking away the uh, race tree and the class trees, yeah. um, people are wondering how you're going to monetize the game now and sell VIP now that you've sort of... All right, so this is, not, definitely, not, like, this is definitely going to fall nervous, into the amulet category, but I will say yeah. that, that we've had some, some pretty significant discussions lately. Um, I mean, to some degree, I think that our, kind of our thinking around this has changed. When we came in originally with Kickstarter, right, the kind of nature of Kickstarter is that you have these big bundles with big back rewards and stuff like that. And you can see clearly over the course of the development of the project that we've been relying less and less on that stuff. I mean, if you go to our store now, it's pretty anemic. There's almost nothing there. I would expect us to continue going in that direction to where we're trying to sell the game. We try to make VIP valuable. We sell skin cosmetic-y things, and we remove everything else. I, that's my expectation of where we're going to go. And we move all that stuff in-game. So um, so uh, we're not quite ready to... That's That one actually is something I need to coordinate with the marketing group. I, can't, I shouldn't just bust out on a live stream with here's the thing. But we have some ideas that we think would be clearly not pay to win, convenience and just you know interesting stuff that would be valuable to vips um i th i think we found a pretty good spot for it but uh you know i also have to make sure that it fits within the time schedule <laughs> so there so there you go that's the best i can give you right now but we will circle back around and answer that question here in the relatively near future because we need to, to you know announce announce all that stuff going into but i'm glad the argument for vip and progression is gone yeah, I mean, that, that that was an important part of it, right? Living under that specter for two years yeah. of everything was like, oh, it's pay to win, oh, it's pay to win. Yeah, like, I just oh. want to I want to answer that question in a way that, you know, even our, our strongest critics go, okay, yeah, that's not a problem with this game. So. All right. Um, uh, people are asking for uh, something similar to mines in Shadowbane. Uh, POIs that we can fight over that produce resources that we can make gear with and things that aren't specifically just for building yeah so i that's a that's another thing that's on our list that we certainly can do and i've got the mines are actually they're technically in they are mostly working but the toast messages aren't firing correctly that's a problem and the materials that come out of them that have cur no current link that allows you to convert those 
into you know, material like resources that you can use. We right. draw a distinction between building materials and crafting resources. We certainly can do it. We've talked about it. I really wanted to get the, the shallow power curve in. I wanted to get the vendors fixed again because those just got broken in 5.8. I want to try and make sure we tackle everything else first. It always makes me nervous when we have completely separate loops in the economy and we build a bridge between them because it means that if we screw up the balance of one, that has a ripple effect that throws the entire other loop out of whack as well. So I'm not totally opposed to doing it. Um, I'm probably more in favor of refineries than you are at this point would be my guess. I'm more, uh, I think what they're really asking for is we want other content. Like I think at the root of this question is, we're saying we want mines because we know that that works. But I think the, we want more content in this game outside of just the forts and the keep stuff to do when you're well, running around the so world. So that's part of it. It's also right? shortcutting the harvesting loop, right? Sure. And, and there are a number of reasons that, that that should be shortcutted. One was the fact that the power curve was too steep. Sure. And one was the fact that, you know, we just need to go through and make it more, we need it to be more easy come, easy go in terms of items. That Those are both accurate. And we statements. have content systems in 6.0 that are going to address a lot of those issues. Right. They don't know what they are yet. But they're, they're asking for the one that they know that they've played before. Right, and We have a slew of them coming in 6.0. And I'm not opposed to that. If those don't work, then I, I don't want it to be so hard. It needs to be easy come, easy go. So that's an option we can do that would address that problem. But there are other ones too. I mean, we don't even have loot at all in the game, right? That's And that's kind of a normal thing in MMOs. So I'd like to get the other ones in place first before we tie these two completely disparate and separate economy loops together, yep. because that's scary. And some of those systems that will come online in 6.0 will make it easier to do things like refineries. Right. And because I'll now be able to take a thing and convert it into many things. Yeah, we can't, that's another thing you can't right. do right now in the, in the crafting system is it's many to one. Many things go in, one thing comes out the other side. Correct. So we would need to basically convert that over to a one to many. One thing goes in and many things come out or many to many. You put a lot of stuff in and a lot of stuff comes or out. Or even more interesting, a different series of things can come out. Yeah. Right. It's not just this fixed thing always produces right. this fixed Absolutely. list of things. It's a randomized list of things that could be better or worse, which creates more interest. So in as a fallback, if none of those things work and we just don't have time for the one, the many to one, uh, the, the many to many or the one to many, we could always go in and add a crafting table and put a series of recipes on it that go one yeah. block in equals a stack of resource stones out. Yeah. So if nothing else works between now and launch, I will do that. I'll make sure that we get that done. We're going to solve the problem one way or the other. I just... I know it seems like an obvious solution, and it is, but it's not necessarily the right solution for launch. So there I you go. I think we can get you something better. Yeah, I think we can get you something better. Uh, okay. Um, so right now we have plentiful amounts of imports and exports. Plentiful. How do you guys plan? Uh, this is why like, the Eternal Kingdoms are uh, relevant right now because we have so many imports and exports, and it's not a big deal just to take stuff, throw it in the EK, crafted there whatever in the future when you guys limit these how do you plan on keeping the eternal kingdoms relevant from a gameplay perspective if the imports and exports are limited well it's relevant to whom right so you we will always have campaigns that come up that are going to allow for more imports and exports and then we'll have some campaigns that come out that don't have any so the question is, for the campaigns that don't have any, how are they relevant? And the answer is, they're not. They're more of a, I care to take my rewards there, but I, by definition, can't take things in. And so in those cases, we are going to rely on kind of intra-campaign crafting and intra-campaign harvesting and the intra-campaign economy loop. That's just, that's kind of by definition, it's designed that way on purpose. For all the other campaigns, though, it will continue to be a, a necessary and, and valuable <coughs> part of the loop. I, I, it doesn't really bother me that there's a part, a particular part of our game that we say, hey, this part of the game is just for this. It's like having a tournament arena or something like that yep. and saying we specifically want the tournament to have different rules. And in this particular area, because of those rules, this thing isn't applicable. OK, that's totally fine. So as long as we continue to have a large chunk of the game where it is applicable, we should be fine. Does that make sense? Okay. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's kind of a by definition, this area is specifically geared to not have it impacted. So the question, how will it impact it in that one area? It won't. That's the, that's the whole point of that area being set up that way. Yeah. 
So I guess people just shouldn't get too used to relying on the EKs in the same way that they are right now. It, it depends on what kind of player they are. Yeah. If they're the kind of player that's going to play in the no import dregs campaign, then and they say, I don't want to think about the EK, I don't want it to be a part of my gameplay, then the answer is it won't have to be. But for everybody else who's like, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up having some campaigns that are very free flowing and they may be very, very popular. Ultimately, you guys are going to decide what campaigns we do because we'll put them up and the ones that are popular, we'll make more of those. And the ones that aren't, we'll make less of those. So it'll, it'll be community driven decisions on that. Not, we'll throw the stuff out and we'll see what floats. Um, have you guys planned any other win conditions besides victory points? One idea I had was first team to own 75% of the map, of the map in two keeps, uh, two out of three keeps. Like, have uh, you guys thought about doing anything besides just points? I've thought about other end conditions, but not necessarily going around the victory points. So just yesterday I was talking about a um, setting a threshold uh, in a dregs campaign where at each season break you're eliminated unless you're in the top X guilds. So spring is everybody comes in and you may have 3,000 guilds, but by the time the end of spring hits and the beginning of summer, it narrows it down to the top 100. So if you're not in one of those guilds, your only option is to either be out or to swear fealty. Like, I think that would be really cool. And then the next the next season, it goes down to 50, and then it goes down to 20, and then we pick a winner. So I think that would be really cool to come up with other things and other ways to to change the flow through the course of the campaign. I haven't gone around victory points, though, so far, because... That seems like a spine that I can hang a lot of meat off of. It seems like that's a good baseline that I can use. So eventually, you're right, we may go around it. For launch, my guess is we'll stick with some variation of the victory points. Okay. Uh, speaking of winning, you've mentioned that there are going to be rewards for winning. What are those? <laughs> I'm looking at Debbie Sue, and she's, she's not letting me. So, yeah, so, well, <laughs> let, I, I, let me tell you the, the types of things that we're going to be doing, right? So, we have the skin system coming online, and that'll allow us to do custom unique skins for character, and that's a full override. So, I think I'll, I'll give you one preview of one that we've got in the pipe, which is, if you go back and look at our earliest banner pictures, we had one with a Ganesian standing on the wagon, and there was a centaur in that picture that looked very much not Roman. He looked like, a, basically, a Braveheart style uh, Highlander. Right. So that yeah, would be a really yeah. kick-ass centaur skin. So we can absolutely take those and give those entitlements away based on winning. We also have an attachable system coming that allows you to attach individual accessories to your character and those work regardless of what character you're on. So if I have a really cool alchemist bag, it doesn't matter if I'm playing a confessor or if I'm playing a duelist that bag will show up somewhere on my body in a place that's appropriate. Like, you know, for the duelist, it may have to be in the, in the back on the left because that's where the spot is. But on this other character, it's going to be over here on the right. You hip. may have so, noticed these inventory slots that showed up in 5.8. There's three additional ones down there past your poisons. For attachables. And yeah. those are the, there's one large accessory and two small accessory slots. Yeah, so those accessories are, are they, they, the, the baseline item accessories can do things. They're basically jewelry. But because of the skin system, we can also override those to say, hey, I want to give this person something really cool that marks this, regardless of which character they're playing. That was key. Doesn't matter what character I'm playing or what armor I'm wearing, somewhere on my body I've got this thing that shows that I participated in and won XYZ campaign. So I think we'll be able to rely pretty heavily on that system moving forward to give a lot of, of just kind of interesting customization. It's clearly not pay to win. It doesn't give you additional power, but it does give you a really cool way of showing off uh, your your um, your previous yeah you're, you're familiar with it I mean you, you played WoW or DC or Diablo they all yeah. have a transmog system at the item level where you can turn the item into looking like yeah. something else so. and unlocking the vault of stuff that you can show on your character is account based yeah so we will so, so, but we so will for for, looking for at cosmetic rewards. Cosmetic, cosmetic rewards, and we might also do things oh. like, you know, uh, um, framing around your, your guild crest and stuff like that, badges, okay. that kind of stuff as yeah. well. But yeah, I guess the one, the one concern that, that some people have with that goes back to one of the previous questions with, like, if you award those things for winning, especially if they're, like, unique items, like, unique cosmetics that, you know, for example, the first people that win the first campaign, they get something that you can't get anymore. Yeah. 
then you worry about people all joining the same faction because sure. people like Well, it doesn't you know, just have to be winning winning faction. We can also make it based on the leaderboard, right? Which needs some work. I mean, that was our first iteration leaderboard, but we can come out and say, yeah. and if you want the gold crown, you have to be in the top 10 of the winning faction or in the top 100 of the winning faction. Right, because at that point, it's, well, great. Now you've just made your pool huge. Right. And you have to compete against each other for that top 10 slot. And we do need to expand on that, too, because right now the initial assumption, and because it's the easiest to get to, is it'll be based on kills. But we need to expand that out because I don't want people to feel like they weren't recognized for the value they provided as a harvester or a crafter yeah. or as a scout or whatever. So we're going to have to figure all that out. Again, it's you know first iteration. First right. time we got the leaderboard in, it has issues, but uh, it we feels worked like through those. We just learned to walk and everyone's yeah. asking us to do an Olympic sprint. And of course they are, and, <laughs> and we will. We just, it's always, you know, uh, crawl, it takes walk, time. run. Yeah, yeah. Right? Call, crawl, walk, run, fly. Fly. Uh -huh. Did you see uh, that? Or you Write that down. We're going to remember that one. So, so way back in Kickstarter, back, back in the Kickstarter time, we heard about animal husbandry and pets. We haven't heard anything since. Yeah, so we, we are working on, uh, so pets and caravans are actually tied together because it's the same AI behavior that we need for both. Right. It was, we thought about originally having mounts use the same behavior, but we've actually moved away from that towards mounts being equipables. It just made more sense in the system. So initially we will likely do the same thing to do with mounts which is we'll just go off of the crafting system because we already have a firm base there and we can get stuff up and running very very quickly i do want to have a taming system and a breeding system i don't know at this point if those are going to make it in by launch they may be post-launch features we're having to start to make some of those hard hard calls caravans have to be in yeah. pets have to be in the thing that the system that feeds those into the game though we could put in something right now temporarily knowing that we're going to come back later and do it something justice what i don't want to do is kind of half-ass it and not have and, and put in a taming system but it's a really crappy one so yeah. so that's th those are the hard decisions we're having to face now as we get closer and closer to alpha beta and launch so so speaking of caravans will that be like a vehicle like how will that system can you give us any details on how you guys are planning that system to work yeah i'm, I'm planning on using the pet the pet code to where it's a it's a basically a following animal that has a inventory. Uh, an inventory that an you inventory. can put stuff onto it and then it's effectively like an escort quest right it's a kind of a uh, a dynamic player driven escort quest um because if you know it i i think it'll be hilarious the day that you show up and you don't kill a person you just there because i think that's what's going to make this game really really cool we finally now have kind of the core most important victory loop in all these other secondary loops need to come online now to, to kind of basically feed into the content that. of the game yeah right? I, mean, I mean we're just missing a lot of content yeah. right once once the pillars are up we now have to put the drywall on and hang stuff yeah. on it that's kind of where we're at it but it point. is cool like the, having those really pillars cool. on in place <laughs> is a significant difference right um even though they're they're kind of not all quite there yet like i mentioned walls earlier not really functioning the way walls should which is i should want to build them because they protect me if they don't right. protect me then i shouldn't want to build them which means why are they in the <clears> game <throat> there's a bunch of pieces like that we're still trying to kind of shore up but you can see the bones of the game have finally emerged and that's really cool I mean, obviously, you guys can see it because we're You're seeing it. three times the activity that we were seeing uh, back in 5.7 on a nightly basis. Okay. Uh, so uh, when can we expect to see more guild UI and guild support? Uh, so we guild stuff is tied into the dreg stuff because they are two different... Uh, data structures that tie into each other because one of them is meta world it exists outside of any one world but then within a campaign you have a hierarchical structure because of swearing fealty but that's temporal so in one campaign I might have you know uh, guild A swears to guild B and in the next campaign over it's flipped so that information is kind of ephemeral and temporal it matters inside the campaign right uh, specifically right. that's a very complicated design and that's why I'm, I'm getting into it now. You can see our approach was kind of stub guilds out and get them in. The next step, get the tags in so you can actually recognize guild affiliation, but don't actually have it have any bearing in the gameplay itself. 
The next phase is getting it in and having it have bearing <clears throat> and having those temporal structures, and I'm feeding that all together now. There's so, also some tech stuff that they're doing just to make there it easier is also in game. Some tech, tech like, stuff so well. I can invite you without having to go to the web page yeah. in game, right? That, so, that's coming online. And that, too. just like everything else, right, will probably come in phases. I would expect that it'll start with slash commands, and then we'll put a UI in so you don't have to jump to the website because that's obnoxious. And then it'll go to a fully functional thing that includes dregs hierarchies, you know fealty trees as well as guilds and those things will be tied together there's actually a lot of complexity there this is why this is so tough is if i'm a person who joins a guild and we're in a campaign where we swear fealty to another guild and then i jump out of that guild and jump into another guild we need to deal with that situation, right? right? Do we leave that person in the sworn guild of the first guild, or do we go ahead and bump them over? I'm of the inclination that we have to bump them over. Well, what if I'm logged into the game in the middle of the siege when that happens? We need to handle that situation. So it gets very complicated very, very quickly. Um, that's why I kind of saved it till the end. Uh, but the good news is a bunch of those pieces, right? Like free placement of buildings and things like that. We built a whole lot of that already for the Eternal Kingdoms. So I get a big mass of work that's already been done that I can leverage. Um, but now it's, this is the kind of, in my mind, this is the single greatest design document I have left to write between now and launch. We've got a whole bunch of other little things, but this getting this piece to work, which is the shadow Shadowbane style hierarchical system with land ownership, is the last, you know, last great piece that I have to get into place. And we, I say I, it's all we, <laughs> but right now the it's paint on is on me because it starts on me. It well, the paint will start me. on him, and then he'll transfer to and me. Then and then he'll transfer to Blair, yeah. and then I'll be like, oh. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we were given the two-minute warning about two minutes ago. So oh, are we? Okay. <coughs> well, so look look through your rest of your questions. Do you have a... Uh, uh, yeah, that, that was actually all the, the big questions I had. I was just going to throw it to the chat because I've sort of been ignoring them. So we could field a few questions there because I'm sure I'm, I'm sure. I'm Debbie, Sue, something. if it's cool with you, can we go a little longer so we can get a couple questions out of the community? No? You don't want us to do that? No? She doesn't like Debbie that. Sue doesn't... You don't, you don't want us to... Well, guys, I'm sorry. Get the pitch, no, that's cool. We'd be, yeah, we'd be happy to take some. Oh my god, everybody's blowing me up on Discord. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, any plans to implement other sort of mother loads uh, besides ore and stone, like hide mother loads? And, um, I really like the idea of hides, like having a big carcass of something, like sure. a dragon carcass you come across. That you, I think that would be really yeah. cool. And trees is kind of an obvious one. In fact, there's a few trees that are so huge, it, you would think that they are, but they're not. Yeah. So I've been meaning to ask you about that. Are you going to convert those so over or not? Near near the end of getting to a live on any project, there's the phase where designers can just start making more stuff out of the stuff they have. Yeah. We haven't gotten to that. I, I mean, I've done some of it with like the the uh, the runic recipes and things like that, where I combine a little bit from this system and a little bit from this system and a little bit from this one to make some new cool content. Yeah. We haven't had a lot of time because we've been so busy hanging girders and pillars. Yeah. We will get to adding cool content like that in the next phase of stuff. Yeah. So as we make the world feel alive, we'll be like, oh, hey, look, I could make this peanut butter and this chocolate go together, and boom, we've got giant mother loads for hide. So, right? um... So uh, I like the Reese's peanut butter analogy. This you is like, like a, 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 a uh, you're like you're you're taking me on a tour of my own childhood now. <laughs> so um, so okay. So uh, the next kind of two big things that I think are coming down the pipe that are going to be the most impactful in terms of workload, right? I already mentioned the dregs. That's going to be a lot in terms of uh, engineering effort. The other one is War Tribes, which I've mentioned a couple times now, which is going to be a lot of design effort. Yep. You guys are going to have to get on the other side of that and continue doing all your kind of normal balance fixing and stuff like that to get to the point where you can start doing that stuff, would be my guess. But I can see it now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those are the two big remaining things. Right, are, it was this big blinding wall. If I could even see to where I could start combining Legos to make fun new side yeah. things, now I can see we're going to get to that point, and then we're yeah. going to make more content. So, which is pretty cool. It's yeah. It's good to get there. It's a good, for, it's so. a good place to be. So, All right, what else you got? Uh, and then... <clears throat> Uh, this is something we were actually talking about last night, like a sort of territory system where right now all of the all of the points on the map are open to be taken all the time. Yep. And I think previous games have had it to where you sort of have to work your way like left to right almost across the map and take things as you go rather yeah. than just one guy over here takes something and one guy over here takes something. And uh, I guess there's sort of a, a problem with the, the action being so spread out that nobody can find anything. 
Uh, there, well, there's a couple no, pieces. Another, let me yeah. let me tackle that first. The problem you just said. There's a couple pieces to that, right? And we need to fix that. One will increase population and concurrency will fix that, which would help. Another is doing a better job with our toast messages. And like whenever you bring up the map, if there's somebody taking a campfire, it's supposed to show up on fire. Yeah. That doesn't work right now. So the, communicating where the hot spots are, I think would be very, very helpful. There's also a visualization piece that we don't have right now. We show the little banners and they are yep. color coded. And so you can kind of say like, see, oh, this area is owned by somebody, but you're right. There's nothing enforcing that. And we don't have any kind of projection of color showing who owns things. So I think that would be really cool as well. Um, Plus the siege are, windows. I mean, yeah, the siege windows will help. Uh, I also think that uh, we could potentially, if we wanted to go in and like just changing death and respawn rules again, could enforce to where I have to have a um, I have to have a base on here. I can't respawn at the temples or the rune gates rather. <sighs> and therefore, if I die and I don't have a place to respawn in this world, I'll have to fall back. There are some <sighs> simple things that we could do like that that would actually give us that feeling. I've been remiss though to, uh, to go. I've been not remiss. I've been reluctant to go so far as to say I can't take this location unless I have an adjoining right. location, right? Uh, Planet Side, I think, does that, <coughs> right? right? Planet Side too, where the there's kind of a front it. line. I've been I've been reluctant to do that. Um, ultimately, we could. Uh, I'd kind of like to see getting these other things in first and see how it feels. I, I think the siege windows on the on the keep or not the keeps the forts will actually help a lot. That will help quite a bit as well. Because yeah, every so. basically, if the entire map is a target then it's hard to direct people. Well, capture bonus will help that too. And capture it, bonus, right, right. now, there's yeah. you know there's a dozen forts. We'll just take whichever <clears> one because it doesn't really matter. Well, when I can log in and actually look and say, well, this one's worth no real points. This one's worth 1,400. Holy crap, that one's somehow worth 3,500 points. Right. Then that now, now I have choice, right? I have choice of where to go. Or we could decide not to do that one and take this one for 14 and that one for 7 because we know they're defending this way. It, all of a sudden, that makes a difference. They're not all just equal. Um, so let's let's get that stuff in and let's see how it feels. I Again, I this is an iterative process. We're making a game up as we go. I've always had ideas of generally where we want to go, but every plan changes when you actually you know build it and you play it and you see how it goes and that that's been one thing that's been really cool about this is it's been a i i see you guys our, our community almost as an adjunct to our testing and design teams right. right so it's constant state of feedback and talking to you guys about what works and what doesn't i mean i think you all would be from an outside, it may look like we don't take your feedback as much as we should, but internally, it feels like we are constantly vetting every decision we make with, well, what do they say about this? And in fact, we'll reach out and say, like, what do you guys say about this? So um, anyway, it, it's, a, it's a very different style of development. My hope is at the end, you guys will feel like you were a part of this process as much as we were. So, And you should, because you have been. Okay. Debbie Sue is now giving us the... Yeah. I was going to say, I don't want you guys to get killed by the marketing people. All right, so. yeah, yeah, they are they are <laughs> very, very mean like that. Okay, so so I did want to, first of all, I wanted to say thank you very much for, for taking the time to come and hit us with questions. We made it through with only a couple that we had to punt until the future, and I will get you answers on there on those those questions. I'm just not quite ready to make the announcements on them yet. Uh, the other thing is, for anybody who's watching who hasn't jumped onto Crowfall right now, um, we have two things going on right now that, that might cause you to kind of tip to actually this game is pretty cool and I want to give it a shot. One is the friend referral links, right? So if you have yep. a friend, you can get a referral link from them right now that will give you, what is it? 20% off, which is pretty cool. The other is we just this morning went through and applied that link to anyone who had registered up before today so that even without a uh, friend referral link, they can go in and get one. So if you did register today or if you go register right now, you'll have to go to a friend or give us another week and we'll probably do it again. If you registered any time before today, we went ahead and gave it to you anyway, just because we thought it would be a cool thing to do. And we, we're hitting a point now where the game is fun enough that people are coming in and actually sticking around. And we like to see more mass because it makes the fights more interesting at night. So we decided, what the hell, let's just go ahead and make this more universal. So anyway, there is that it? Is that, yeah. Did I cover it? Did I get it right? All right. And Dave. All right. And oh, and yeah. And after this... For real this time, because last <laughs> time we announced it and Dave wasn't actually coming on. He was back in his office. Dave's like, like, what? I'm supposed to be on. did you say that? That's not true. So that was just a mistake. Sorry about that. This time, though, for realsies, we're going to have Dave Greco doing some Dave, Dave time. Quality time with Dave. <laughs>
all of a sudden Larry's like, hey, where's Dave? We're like, he's at his desk. Yeah, yeah. So, oops. Sorry. Well, I think I think a lot of people really appreciate this because I asked a lot of the really hard questions that people have been dying <laughs> to get the answers to. So I appreciate you guys doing this. Absolutely. No, not, it's really and cool. Not, and not doing any sort of pre-approved questions or anything nope. like that. Uh -oh. There was yeah. none of that, if anybody was wondering. No. Nope. None of that. So it's pretty awesome. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank Great. you very much for taking the time. Yeah. Uh, and keep those videos coming. We, we love those. Those are really cool. The class breakdown ones are some of my favorite. Um, I just like the one where you assassinate people. I think that's pretty fun. That oh, is fun as well. Christ, the Christmas but one. <laughs> there's, there's a special joy that Halish and I get when we see uh, players actually translate crazy ideas we had in our head with powers and things and them chaining them together to do a bunch of cool stuff. That's really cool. Right? It's actually, you're like, hey, they got it. Yeah. Right? They got it. They understood it. And sometimes like, oh, and that one makes it do something completely different. Right? So seeing that stuff is great. And I think you had a great point in your... Uh, balance video yesterday's each uh, cohort of new people that comes in will do different things with the powers and it won't always be that um, this flavor of spec is the most OP because new eyes will look at it and that's kind of part of us inheriting from the Shadowbane genealogy so to speak which is the waters are just so muddy that you can kind of make this area cool if you combine these three things yeah right and you guys tend to fall into what's the most overpowered currently, i.e. Pit Fighter, right? And everybody, and what was it, two weeks before that, it was uh, Vindicator, the uh, the field, the Divine, what was the field? Uh, name escapes me. Divine Light. Right, divine you, light. you guys just kind of migrate from one overpowered thing to the next, and hopefully it'll get to a point where it's just... That's a nice mix. Yeah, we've hit the balance <laughs> point that it's the, the combination of those things, yeah. and it's finding the secret combinations that make it kind yeah. of... Of the fun so the exploration loop is very high so that that's kind of been our intention this entire time cool all right so we've got a new version coming out pretty soon we're working on it right now that'll be an update to 5.8 to get in the capture bonus stuff again if you're just catching on to us now and you want to come jump in on the fun crowfall.com and just correct me if i'm wrong debbie sue if they register or if they if they use the friend link that's obvious if they previously registered all they have to do is say buy a package and it will they'll see it right they don't have to do anything special so right. i'd left that part out and i, I realized that i probably should have said that so while i do love people hitting jack with customer support issues because i think it's hilarious he did specifically say would you please tell him how to do it so i don't have to field hundreds of of emails and yes yeah, so there you go jack you're welcome you just, that's the one thing you're gonna do so, for jack yeah that's right. it i've done one nice thing this year and he already burned it so all right all right well, thank you very much guys thank you very much zyback um we'll have to do this again sometime this is pretty cool oh, i yeah, like done. i like questions coming from the Absolutely. community so all right and watch dave yep stick around for next dave. up dave greco